Kurds, Kurds, Kurds. Hello there, Board Game Maniacs, and thanks for joining us for this series of videos which I'm hoping to put out there to help new players such as myself as well as any other players that have any kind of questions about rules for the game Star Wars Legion by Fantasy Flight Games. Now, if you went down to my channel previously, you noticed that I do have some videos up there for Star Wars Legion because we did do a theme month. Yes, we made rules mistakes, we are very aware of that, but the purpose of doing that was so that I could start getting people's attention for Star Wars Legion and to start commenting about, you know, like, you made rules mistakes for this or for that and so forth. That was the whole point of that theme month and also to help start learning the rules. But again, just like any other game, when you start learning rules, you are going to make rules mistakes. I even seen veteran players playing different games that make rules mistakes as they go along and they have to stop and look in the rule book and everything else. So again, this series of videos is going to be all about Star Wars Legion rules. I'm going to try to cover as much as possible in this in this series to let, like I said, new players learn the rules or people who are thinking about playing Star Wars Legion as well as players that are veteran to the game. And in these videos, if I do make any rules mistakes, or if I don't mention rules that should be included, please, by all means, comment down below in the comment section and let everybody know who is watching it what these rules are, because this is how we learn. This community is growing. Star Wars Legion is a large game. It's getting bigger, bigger. There's more expansions, more waves coming in. It's an awesome game. And because of that, with your help, the viewers out there, you're gonna help me and other players with rules. And this is the whole point of this learning series. Before we go any further, I just wanted to give a shout out to two people that helped me with this first video. And that is Lieutenant Dan Poole and Richard Osborne. They are members of Star Wars Legion groups on Facebook and so forth. And I put a shout out to a whole bunch of groups and I did get a lot of replies and right now for this video those two individuals have helped me out to sort out this video and get it out to everybody so that they learn and if you can't tell already from that the little brief quick intro this video is all about the different types of cards that you get and use in Star Wars Legion so everybody is on the same page what we are going to be referring to is the rule set that was put out effective February 28th of 2020. It's version set 1.6.1. .1. This is what we are going off. And you can go to Fantasy Flight Games, you can click on the products, you can click on Star Wars Legion and rules, and you can download this updated rule set. So, when this video is released, this is the rules that we are going to be referring to for the entire series. Starting off with the different types of cards, we are going to actually start right from the first one that I think we should start at. I'm just flipping through the rule book here and I'm reading the notes that uh, was sent to me. And what you see before you, these are called battle cards. Now there's three different types of battle cards. They are objective cards, deployment cards, and condition cards. You can see the here, these are objective cards. They are blue. You can see the little blue color onto them. There are many that you get. Now, these cards are mixed up with expansions that I have and both the core, the core box is for both the one with Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker and the one with Obi-Wan Kenobi and General Grievous. So be aware that this here is the two expansions mixed into it. I, kind of went crazy and bought a lot of Star Wars Legion because I love it. When I say crazy, I mean maniac. I'm just gone maniac. 
So anyhow, and we can see a black book here. That there is just to prop it up to help get rid of the, the shine of the lights onto the cards because they are a little bit glossy. But anyhow, these are objective cards. These ones are going to be your conditions. And these are your deployment. And that is the three types of these battle cards that you get. So now what we're gonna do is gonna go in close and we're gonna examine each of them so that we can kind of like uh, distinguish which is which and how we use them. The first set of cards that you see here are called objective cards. Now, this is part of the three different parts of battle cards that you get. And they're very important to establish the objective of the game. Now you can see we have uh, just an example of a front that has all the information of the objective card as well as the back and again these are blue you can see they have little blue tabs and the back of the card is primarily blue that you can see talking specifically about the objective cards um it determines the objective the player does for the battlefield so when you are going to be playing this game you're going to have to have 12 cards in total and it's not just the objective card you have objective cards you have deployment cards and you have condition cards too as well. We'll go over everything and I'll show you at the end of this video, I'll show you how you use the objective cards at the beginning of the game, just so that everybody is aware. Now, first off, let's talk about the objective cards specifically. Now, this is on page 56 of the updated rule book and the objective cards determine the process the players are battling for during the game. Uh, not the process, sorry, the objective cards determine the objectives the players are battling during the game. I can't even read them, reading it out of the book. Jeez. Players determine an objective for a game while defending the battlefield during setup. So you can see here, it says such things. It will have the title of the card, it will have the setup of where you set everything up, and how you win the objectives, which is the victory conditions. Now, every one of these cards are different. So just be aware of that. But continuing on about the objective cards, each objective card describes where to place objective tokens and how players gain victory tokens by claiming or controlling those objectives, which is right here for the setup. Each objective card contains a victory box, which describes how victory tokens are earned or the game is won. So you can see there for the victory. So let's take a, a little bit of a closer look at this one card. I'm just going to grab it here and put it up closer to the camera. Hopefully the camera will get in focus. There we go. So this one here is just an example. Recover the supply. So during the setup, place one unclaimed objective token on the center of the battlefield. Then starting with the blue player, players alternate placing four more unclaimed objective tokens on the battlefield. Each token must be placed beyond range one of each deployment zone and beyond range one of any other objective token. All trooper units gain claim, which is an action. Claim an objective token that is in base contact with your unit leader. I'm trying to keep that on camera. And to win, if you, if you choose this objective card, victory. At the end of the game, each player gains one victory token for each objective token that is claimed by one of their units. So that's the anatomy of the objective cards. Pretty simple. All you do is you read the whole text here and then it tells you where to set them up and everything. It, pretty, pretty basic, very simple. And like I said, there's many, many others that are here that you can, you know, like there's like breakthrough, key position, recover supplies. I have duplicates of each because I bought two of the core box of both the, uh, the clone ones as well as like the Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker one. And that is how you, how you determine or how you know which are the objective cards is because they have the blue here and the recognizable back on that. So let's go to the next type of card that's used. Let's, cause it talked about deployment. Let's look at the deployment cards next. Next, you see the deployment card. So you can tell these are very distinguishable to as well. They have like a globe or the Death Star, if you really want to call it Death Star, but they are, they are circled in this and they always have a red and blue. And this defines the battlefield and where you set up your units for your deployment. That's why they're called deployment cards. Now with these deployment cards, you can see here, you know, they have a red and blue because one player can be red, one player can be blue, and you can determine that 
through the game. I'm not going to explain how you de determine who's the deployment, who's the red player, who's the blue player. In a, another video that we're going to do for deployment, it will specifically explain that part. So everything is going to tie in together. But again, this first video in the series is all about the cards that you get. Not tokens and cards, but just the cards, different types of cards, the anatomy of cards. And that's pretty much it for this one video. But that's, I'm starting to ramble. Anyhow, so deployment cards. There's a lot to cover with this game, but it's such a fun game, it's well worth it. And this is going to help me learn the rules more. And by you commenting down below and letting me know about, you know, if I missed anything or if I stumbled over words and made stuff incorrectly, you can comment too as well. And also, again, just great shout out to who has helped me so far for this one video. And that is it. So with these deployment cards, I'm just gonna bring this up a little closer. So that you can kind of see it so you can see here it has threes onto it and this is the the distance for each of the uh each side i should say for the red player and blue player so this is range three where you would deploy your units and range three on this side where you deploy your units and they would stay within this confines for setting up or deploying your units i, I can't really say too much about the deployment of this because it is very self-explanatory for the deployment these are, consider this as like little maps, I guess, because Star Wars is played onto a six by three table. So again, six feet wide by, th six feet long by three feet wide. And that's the standard Star Wars game of like 800 point skirmish games are played on smaller table size, but we're not getting into that. We're just talking about the cards for this video. Anyhow, it's a map for deployment. That's why they call deployment cards for the battle cards. Let's go on to the next one, which are going to be the condition cards. Before we go on to the other card, which is the condition cards, I still want to just touch upon this a little bit more. And in this rule book, the version that I showed you that we're going off, on page 34, it has a little section called deployment. And it kind of goes over for deployment and that, but pretty much when you determine who is the red player and blue player, you're going to set out using the range ruler. Now the range rulers, we're gonna talk about tools in a different video, but put, what the range rulers are for is for measuring the range that you can shoot at and measuring for deployment. They're not movement tools, they are range rulers. There's a difference there. Again, we'll explain that more when we get into another video for doing the range, uh, the different types of tools and everything that is in this game. Now, having said that, you can see here, that's kind of like a basic deployment. But then you can get other cards, which I'm just gonna find one that looks a little crazy here. Here we go. Let's, uh, let's look at this one. So this is major defensive. So that one there is definitely a little bit different than what the other one that we've seen. And it's pretty much all the same. It's a map of the table where you deploy your units or set them up for deployment. So if we break this down a little bit more, the red player, now he has range three, you can see here. So range three, range three, and this is range two. And then you also have a range three and a range one. So range one is this way. You can see the arrows that are onto it. I don't know if it's, you, you can pick it up close enough, but they do have like uh, the arrows of which way you're going to measure it. Like for this range three, wait till I get a little bit closer. I'm kind of, I want this to be as clear as possible. So yeah, you can see the arrows are pointing for range three here, the little black arrows, range two is that way, range three you measure this way, and you can see the arrows onto it. So pretty simple, you just gotta follow the directions, but when you mark the mouse, when you set the range things up, you're probably wondering, if you're new to this game that is, how can, am I just gonna use dice just to mark off where each section is or whatever? You don't have to. Now with Fantasy Flight Games, it is they included little tabs that you can you can put in for the to pretty much mark out what your deployment zone is. And there are these tabs right here. Let me get that in focus here. There you go. So with these tabs, you get them into the core box. They're really, really good. You can use dice, so it don't really matter, but this here just helps things a little easier. They are 90 degree angle. So because of that, when you set it up, you can set up your deployment tabs this way so you know what deployment area to set in. So example like this here, you can see like you would put one, whoops, 
you would put one like this because of this angle right here. And then you'd put another one like that, another one like that. And the thing is, is this will determine where at you can deploy your units. Hopefully this is clear enough for you and I'm not just complicating it, but it's pretty simple. You pick out your deployment from the map after you go through the initial setup and so forth. And you can use these, the tabs to put down so to show where your deployment is. Now that is for both sides, both red and blue player does that. The last part of the battle cards are the condition cards. Now you can see I have the condition cards laid out here. You can, they're very distinguishable too as well. They have the color green and they usually have, you know, like the back you can see the green too as well. I really like the design of these. They look pretty cool. But with the condition cards, if we go, if we refer to the rule book on page 27, condition cards. During setup, players choose a condition card to represent the battlefield environment. Each condition card affects the game in unique, in a unique way as described on the card, which is pretty much right here. Some condition cards utilize condition tokens. And we're not going to show you what the condition tokens are. There's different ones, but when we get into the token part of the the series, I'll explain it more to you. But anyhow, let's take a, just a, a little bit closer look at one of the condition cards. With each condition card, just like all the other cards, they do have a heading to them. So this one here is limited visibility. During the first round, units cannot perform range attacks beyond range two. So again, using the range rulers. During the second round, units cannot perform range attacks beyond range three. And then it has a little bit of a uh, text blurb there. A vicious storm has kicked up a cloud of debris, forcing a brief hiatus. When the wind dies down, the armies will advance once more. So again, this condition is showing that it, it's limited visibility because it is a sandstorm that is going on. It's kicking up the debris and everything, and it explains. So again, very simple for condition cards. They're, 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 again, they're pretty self-explanatory. All the cards are self-explanatory. So now what I'd like to do before we go on to the next type of card, and that is, we're gonna show how you use the, uh, the battle cards at the beginning of the game. I'm taking this word for word, this one particular part of the rule book, and this, we're going off of page five and six into the rule book. Now, this is after you, you build your army with your points, your factions, and your upgrade cards, unique cards, your, your command hand and everything else. So this here just has to do with the battle cards itself. So with the battle cards, as part of the army building process, a player makes a deck of 15 battle cards containing four of each type, objective, deployment, and condition with no duplicates. So each player takes four objective, four, Oh, sorry, four deployment, four objective, and four conditions. And so each player will have their own set of cards. They will pick out which ones that they want to use, and then they will shuffle them in their hand to have 12 cards each. So the red player will have 12 battle cards, the blue player will have 12 battle cards. So as an example, I'm not gonna look through these, but you would, you would go through them, pick out ones you want. So I'm gonna pick just the top four of this. And these ones are discarded. I'm gonna pick the top four of the condition cards and discard the other ones. And I'm also gonna pick, or the objective, I said these are the condition cards, so I'm gonna pick four of these and discard the other ones. So each player would do this part for the setup. So again, this here is going to be deployment cards. So that's four there. And this here is going to be the objective, which is for them, and four condition cards. Now, after you do that, you're just going to mix them together and shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And again, this is what happens for each player. So you're just gonna mix them up. I'll just grab the other ones and, I'll show, and get them ready too as well. You see you have the cards laid out here. Now, again, we're going off of the, the rule book here. This is page six. 
You see me in the, the previous clip that I shuffle them all together, but you're not do you're not supposed to do that. I just have a tendency to shuffle them. But you can see these here are going to be your objective, or I mean your deployment cards. There's four of them. You have these ones, which is going to be your for your victory. So this here is your deployment, your objective, and these are your condition cards. Now during the setup, you are going to determine who's blue player and who's red player. So this is the blue side, that's the red side. I just kind of separated them just so everybody's aware. So again, continuing on with page six, reveal battle cards using the blue player's battle deck. So these ones here, these ones are not used yet. And they might not even be used. So using the blue player's battle deck, shuffle the objective deployment and condition cards separately. So again, the key thing here is separate it, keep them separate. I'm just gonna shuffle them here like that, like that, and like that. So that is all of them. I'm just gonna turn them this way. I'm just gonna zoom out maybe a little bit, or maybe I can get them in frame here. <sighs> The reason why I'm doing it this way is my other tripod just broke in between clips. So I have to try to figure stuff out here because I don't have another tripod that I can use right now. So anyhow, blue players cards right here. Red players are pushed off to the side. And after you separate them and you shuffle them, you're going to then draw and reveal three cards of each type lining them horizontally row facing the blue players long table edge. So you just set them out, that's what it is. So you got them here. So it's three cards. So you're gonna have one left over. So we're just going to go one, two, and three. Let's see if I can get them on camera so that it's a little bit better, easier to see. So we'll just push them off to the side. Sorry for crossing camera, everybody, but it's just the way it has to be. So again, three and three this way, like so. And that is your deployment card. So you had them all set up like this, like so. So it's gonna look something towards this lines on the table. I just change the camera angle a little bit so that we can actually see what's going on here easier. So again, this is all going off of the blue player's cards. So you have your condition cards, you have your objective cards, and you have your deployment cards. So after this is set out, then each player is going to take turns eliminating the leftmost one from one of the rows. And I'm just gonna read this right at the book, just so we're on the same page. So this is on page six, and this is uh, step number six, defining battlefield. Starting with the blue players, players take turns choosing a category and eliminating the leftmost card in the category. A player may also forfeit their opportunity to eliminate a card if they wish to do so. So pretty much, you're gonna go through this and if one person has one of the, just say like, oh, I really want this deployment card to be left there. And when it comes time to the, the player, the red player, blue player, whoever it is, they can say, you know what? I'm passing, you get to pick out another one. So just be aware of that. Where was I here? After each player has had two opportunities to eliminate a card, the leftmost card remaining in each row is a card used during the battle. If players eliminate the first two cards in the category, the final card cannot be eliminated. So we have the uh, blue player onto the left side and the red player on the right. This is just an example. So the blue player says, well, you know what? I don't want to use recovering supplies because I don't like that. So that is eliminated. So then the red player will be like, well, I really want the battle lines deployment here I'm gonna pass. So he passes, or she passes, whoever it is. And then it's back onto the blue player. So again, it's the leftmost. So now, all categories are the same. We, this here, still, even though there's one missing here, 
we can still uh, eliminate that. So then the blue player is like, you know what? I don't want the, the break throughout for the objective. I'd rather the key positions because I like that. And I know that that is the last one there. So because of that, it's not going to be eliminated. So there is tactics to doing this part. Because if the blue player really want to keep positions to be left, then the other player pass because they want battle lines. And the, the blue player is like, hey, do you know what? I'm eliminating this one. So therefore, this one has to stay because it's the last card in that category and it is the, the leftmost because it's the only card. So then the red player would be like, okay, well then, I don't want this, I want this one to stay, so I'm going to eliminate this one. And this process will continue on until each of them will have two turns for eliminating. So a player may also forfeit, like I said, to eliminate a card if they wish so. Um, uh, where am I at? A player may also, I'm just reading through this here. After each player has two opportunities, so just two. When it says two opportunities, you know, you can say pass, and then go, so after the two opportunities are finished, then the leftmost ones in each category is going to be, which is determined for setting up your battlefield. So just say everybody did their thing, so then what you would do is this is the leftmost, that is leftmost, that is leftmost. So we are just going to eliminate these cards, I kind of grabbed the wrong thing here. Sorry. There we go. I'm just going through the motion, sorry. So because of that, now we know that this is what our battlefield setup is going to be. We're going to have our deployment. So range one for the red, range one for the blue that we set, and it's the long table edge. Because remember, if I grab this just so that we can get a little better shot of it. So the log table edge, remember, three feet by six feet. So the six foot, the red player deploys there, the blue player deploys there. So that's deployment. So then you look up, look at the objective cards and it tells you key position is the title and it tells you how to set up everything and what, how you get victory points for, for getting, like for the setup and the objectives and so forth. So then we know that is that. And then this here, we already seen this card when I was explaining it for the conditions, limited visibility. So remember the sandstorm, this is gonna happen into the game. So we have the deployment, the objective for the victory conditions, and also the condition cards. And that is how you set up the battlefield, go through for your red player and blue player. Remember the blue player, you're gonna use the blue player's cards. And that brings me to the next thing that I wanna talk about before we go on to the next cards. And that is, what happened to the red player's cards? Well, with the red player cards, what this is, is each player would determine, they have their 12 cards, four in each separate category. So three categories, four in each, well, three times four is 12, I can do math. And then when you're doing your setup, you're gonna determine which is the red player and which is the blue player. So in another instance, just say that these cards here, the red player, but they wouldn't be during the roll off and so forth for deployment, they won, so they would use these cards and go through the same process as opposed to the, these cards would be gone. So whoever is determined to be the blue player is the cards that they use. That's the simplified version of it. I'm trying to overcomplicate things and I apologize for that. So again, each player picks 12 cards, four cards for each of the categories, and then by determining who's the blue player, they get to use they get to use the battle cards of the blue player to determine how the battlefield is shaped up, if that makes more sense. So again, these would just not be used at all because the blue player, that person won the roll off or was able to pick for the blue player and the other player will be the red automatically. Now, for determining who is a blue player and red player, that is going to be in a separate video, like I said, for deployment. But pretty much it's got to do with when you're building the army, who got the lowest point costs, and so on to, to determine who is the blue player. And if it comes down to it, between the red and blue player, and if each of them had the same points and so on, you could potentially be doing a roll-off to see which one it is. But we'll cover that in another video. So anyhow, 
So that is how you use the battle cards for the setup. Let's go on to the next part of the cards. If this at all is any bit confusing, please send me an email at boardgamemaniacsgmail.com and I'll be more than happy to clarify what I said in the video. So anyhow, let's continue on. Next thing we're gonna talk about is the unit cards. Now you can see there's four different cards here and that makes up the faction cards for the units, the factions for the units. And what I know of right now, there's only four different types of factions out for this game. And they're the Galactic Empire, the Rebel Alliance, Separatist Alliance, and Galactic Republic. The reason why there's four, because there's two different box sets, core box sets that were released. There was one with Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, like I said, and then there was also another one with Obi-Wan Kenobi and General Grievous. So that kind of breaks up the two different eras of the Star Wars. So just be aware of that. So let's look at each symbol first off. We're going to go over each one of these, each of the cards. Like we're not going to go like this here is a separatist card and then go over each of the icons. I'm just going to show you what each icon is. They're probably going to pop up on the screen when I'm editing to as well digitally. I don't know yet, but we're going to go a little bit closer and we'll look at that too as well. So let's deal with the unit cards. First thing we're talking about the units is the four different types of factions you can get into this game. First type of faction is the Galactic Republic. So they could be, you know, like there's clones or Obi-Wan. These are all the Galactic Republic. So like Phase 2 clones, Phase 1 clones, Bark Speeders, uh, Captain Rex. There's so many different things in here, but just be aware that you know, if you look at this symbol right here where my finger is, that is the faction for the Galactic Republic. So be, oh, be aware, Galactic Republic. And I'll hopefully throw this icon up on the screen at some point close to this and say that this is the Galactic Republic. The next faction cards is the Separatist Alliance. And you can see, I'll just try to zoom in here. That is the icon for the Separatist Alliance. And again, you can see like the battle droids, uh, Droidicas, General Grievous, all different units you can get, Count Dooku, such things as that. If you're familiar with the Star Wars canon, you, ever, a lot of this will be familiar to you, but just so we show what each icon looks like for each faction. You know, the, the last one that I showed you along with this one, the Separatist Alliance and the Galactic Republic, that, these two cards, are the cards that you get into the core box. It may not be all of these cards, but that's the two factions you get in the core box with Obi-Wan Kenobi and General Grievous. For the other core box that you get Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker in, this is the faction, the Rebel Alliance, and you can see this is the logo on the upper left-hand corner that lets you know that this is the Rebel Alliance cards. And again, there's many, many ones that you can get, and they're always coming out with different waves and so on. So we'll go over more of this as we go along into this video. Last but not least, the other faction is the Galactic Empire. And you can see that is the token there for it. And as stated before, there's many that you can get, many upgrades and so on. So I kind of went a little crazy with getting a lot of the Star Wars Legion uh, expansions. And also I bought like two core sets of each one. So. Yeah, I kind of went a little crazy, but hell, let's go in a little closer at the anatomy of these cards and we can talk about them a little bit more in detail. Looking a little closer at the unit cards, we're gonna talk about what each of the tokens and icons mean and so forth that are on the cards. And I just had to pick Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, father or son, because they're very iconic into the Star Wars universe. They were pretty much the, the first things that you learn about in Star Wars and Star Wars canon. Well, you should learn about them. But now we're going to go a little bit closer to this. So let's first off, we already talked about the symbol. So again, Rebel Alliance, and this is the Galactic Empire. So you know that that's what cards, that's what they have. That's what it is. So before we do anything else, I'm just going to flip it over because it's pretty cool because they do have like a little information about each of the the units that are on the card. So with Darth Vader, it has keywords. So what each keyword means, which is really good. And underneath like their, their title or the name for Darth Vader, it says Dark Lord of the Sith. So you know that he's a Dark Lord of the Sith. Luke Skywalker, hero of the Republic 
or rebellion. So you know that he's a hero for the rebellion. So just be aware of that. So on the opposite side, they have like keywords and it explains roughly what they mean, which is really good. So you don't have to spend the time flipping through the rule book and find out, well, what does impact three mean? What does Pierce three mean? And so on and so forth. So it's really, really good that it gives that kind of explanation for you. A little bit even tighter look at Darth Vader's card. I like the Sith, the, you know, I'm a maniac and I'm more of a bad guy than a hero. But anyhow, a little bit closer look at it. So again, this here, it tells you the type of unit is. So this is a trooper unit. It's only single one of Darth Vader. And if we just deal with the top section of this first, Again, what they are, this is the Empire. Darth Vader, I already said what he is. And here is very important. So you can see the symbol. So when you are going to set up your armies, you have tokens that let you know for which one for activating and so on. I'll show you that in a second. And also down here, it has a number one. So what that means is that this here is a unit of only one miniature. But if you look at other ones here, um, let me just uh, throw this battle droid one up for a second. It shows you the symbol for the, the troops or the core. It tells you what type it is. So again, these are droid troopers. So it's a droid trooper type. And there's six that you use for this card. So there's six droids, miniatures that are using this one card. And that's the symbol there. As opposed for Darth Vader, Kind of get that even on camera again. Darth Vader is only one miniature because there's only one Darth Vader. And that is a token to use for Darth Vader. And I'll just show you that symbol there. That's the, who it is. Darth Vader is, is a commander. And if you look in the book, it tells you exactly which one is which and how many you can have in a standard like 800 point game. Speaking of that, if you go to page five into the rule book, it tells you ranks. So Darth Vader's rank is there. He's the commander and it tells you, I'll just read it, the book here, it says, a unit rank is used for army building. Each army must include the following. Commander, operative, corps, special forces, support, and heavy. And it also has restrictions for this. We're talking about an 800 point game, which is your standard. So commander, each army must include one or two command units. For operative, each army must include up to two operatives, may include up to two operatives, I should say. So there's a difference between must and may. So when you are playing, if you're playing like the, the rebels, you have to have at least one commander, but you don't have to have operatives. You may have up to two operative units. And for core, core units, you know, uh, must include three to six core units, special forces. Each army may include up to three special force units. Support, each army may include up to three support units. And heavy, each army may include up to two heavy units. So when you're building your army, you must, there's musts that you have to include and there's mays that you may include. So just be aware of that. But anyhow, this is the commander token right here. So having said that, I'm going to show you what the command tokens look like. Not condition tokens or anything else. These are specifically called order tokens or command tokens. Some people are on command tokens. Some people call them order tokens. In the rule book on page three, it refers to them as order tokens. So that's what we're going to refer to them as. So you can see this is the symbol that is a command token, a commander order token. So you would use this for Darth Vader. There's two sided. This is when they are active, activated or active or on the table. And after they are not activated, you flip it over to this. You can see there's an, a special case. This special case is not included into the core box or anything. These are actually corn coin holders that you can purchase from like jewelry stores. I bought a whole bunch of them just to protect them because they are made out of really hard cardboard. And I just want to protect as much as I can of the game. Same as like sealing your miniatures. And if you're wondering what the size of these are, they're 36 millimeter. So if you want to buy them so that you can uh, put your order tokens in, it just go to a jewelry store and say you want coin protectors or coin plastic coin cases, the hard plastic ones. 
and you want 36 millimeter because that is what will fit it. They're a little, you know, just a little tiny bit loose. They got a little bit of a space as you can see there, but it's nothing too, too major and this will just protect your investment even more. Continuing on with the anatomy of the unicards, again, in the rule book on page four, it does have card anatomy of the different types of cards. So again, these are unicards. So you have your faction, the name, the type of unit it is, and how many is in your unit. Now, the next thing we're gonna look at is right here, it's point value. So when you're creating 800 point list, you are going to have to tally up all of the point value for your cards and upgrade cards and so on to get equal to or as close to 800 points. But you don't want to go over it unless you, you can play like a thousand point game if you want, the 900 point game, or the skirmish, a uh, general skirmish game is about 500 points. So just be aware of that. So that's a point value. So Darth Vader is worth 200 points. He's pretty expensive. Um, continue on upgrade bar. So right here you see the upgrades. So when we're doing, when I'm talking about the upgrade cards and you're gonna upgrade Darth Vader, then these are the type of upgrades that you can put on Darth Vader as well as the amount of upgrades you can put on Darth Vader. So these symbols here, you could put three of the same symbol upgrade cards on it and no more. So just be aware of that. Um, what else can I say? So unit keywords, this is kind of like the keyword description of each one. So again, Luke Skywalker has one as well as Darth Vader and all the other units. It may be not as much as this. It could only be one. It, it, it depends on what kind of unit it is and the type of abilities they have. Now for your upgrade cards, everything, every, every unit is going to be different. I'm struggling, bloody, 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 struggling over my words because I, I know what I want to say, but I am saying it in my mind faster than what I met in my mouth, if that makes sense. But anyhow, so again, upgrade cards. This here is your unit keywords. So which is really cool about this is like Darth Vader got deflect. It gives you an explanation. Immune to Pierce, Master of the Force One, and Relentless. Now, if you want to know roughly like what do these mean, it has explanations here. And also on the back of it, it also explains too as well, which is really cool. It makes it very simple. And if it's still something that you're not sure about, you can always just refer to the keywords into the rule book. What I ended up doing with the keywords, uh, I went down to a website called boardgamegeek.com. I looked up Star Wars Legion and what fans of the game did and players, they made a list of keywords that you can print off and that's what I did. It just helps it, but everything pretty much is on the card on the front and back. But the thing is too as well is you may not find everything there and you may have to do some searching. So if you have such thing as this keyword list, it's gonna save you some time, especially when you're playing a game. You don't wanna spend more time looking in rule books than what you do playing the game because it can take away from it. But anyhow, so again, the upgrade cards are here, the unit keywords. Now, if we look on the bottom here, we have weapons. So Vader has one weapon here, which is a Vader lightsaber. And there's two types of weapons that you can get for troopers. And that is a melee weapon with this symbol is right here. And you can also get a range weapon. Now, when I say range weapon, uh, I'll show you Luke Skywalker's card because he has a range weapon equipped onto his miniature. Now, you can get other, through upgrades, you can get ranges, like for an, an example for Darth Vader, one of the upgrade cards is a saber throw, which takes his saber that he can only do in melee when he's in base-to-base -base contact, but he can throw it at a range of, I think it's like one to two. I can't really recall what the upgrade card does say, but I, when we're talking about upgrade cards, I will show you more specifically what it is, but it reduces the amount of dice. So instead of red, uh, six red dice, you would only roll half of that, which is gonna be three red dice to be able to do a saber throw for Darth Vader. But again, upgrade, card, upgrade cards add points value to when you're building your army to get to that 800 points or 500 points or whatever amount of points that both of you agree on that you're playing. Here's Luke Skywalker right here, just so that I can show you a little bit of difference here. So with Luke Skywalker, you can see he has uh, also uh, lightsaber. He rolls six black dice, Darth Vader rolls six red dice. 
He has Impact 2, Pierce 2, Darth Vader has Impact 3, Pierce 3. So Darth Vader's uh, lightsaber is a little bit more powerful than what Luke Skywalker's is for this Luke Skywalker miniature. On top of that too as well, you can see here what I was talking about. Now Luke Skywalker is not like Darth Vader because he's equipped with a DL-44 blaster pistol. Now this is their, their range icon. It has a blue circle with a number into it and that lets you know what range ruler how much range he has onto it. So Luke can hit anywhere from range one to two, and it has a pierce two for the keyword, and he has two red dice that he rolls when he is attacking. So again, be aware of that. There's two different types of attacks. There's range and there's melee. Continuing on with the anatomy of the card, onto the right-hand side, you'll see some different symbols here. So, and, and numbers obviously. So Luke Skywalker, he has a six and this symbol here, that is for wounds. And Luke Skywalker can take a maximum of six wounds before he is done and out of the game. Darth Vader has eight wounds, so he is tougher. Now you can see how to, to as well is there's a red die here and a red die there. So what that is, your defense dice for your unit. So when Luke Skywalker is defending or Darth Vader, they're gonna roll red defense dice. So be aware of that. Next one you see here is your courage symbol and the courage number. Darth Vader has a courage symbol, but no courage number. So what that specifically means is that Luke Skywalker has a courage value of three before he becomes suppressed and Darth Vader will never become suppressed because he don't have a courage value. So when I say suppression, you're talking about tokens such as this, that's a suppression token. We When we get into uh, attacking video we'll talk more about the, the tokens and suppression and everything else but there's a point that pretty much just to sum it up is that if whatever unit you have if they have a number and they get equal or above that amount of suppression onto them they can become suppressed which means that they're gonna have one fewer actions so in the game you have two actions they could have one fewer action because they are suppressed so just be aware of that too as well on top of that, you see Luke Skywalker only has this. So on the card, there is an attack surge and a defense surge. Attack is always the upper and defense is always the lower. Let's see if I can find a card that gives uh, like, that shows defense surges just so everybody is kind of onto the, ah, here we go, on the same track. So this here is uh, the Jordicas. It's a little different. So again, you can see they have a cog wheel instead of a courage. So the cog wheel is totally different. Cog wheel is resilience of how much resilient the the uh, Jordicas are or vehicles are. Because vehicles don't have courage value, they have resi resilience values instead of uh, courage values. But like the B1 battle droids, they have courage values. They don't, even though that they're robots, they're droids, they have courage. But the Jordicas, it is, considered a vehicle, a ground vehicle. So it's not a trooper, it's a vehicle and vehicles have resilience instead. So that's just an example there. But what I wanted to talk about is you can see, so Luke Skywalker as opposed to Darth Vader, as opposed to the Jordicas, Darth Vader don't have any bonuses for both either attack or defense. You have, Luke Skywalker has a bonus for his attack but not for his defense. So when he rolls a symbol of this when he's attacking, every one of these symbols will convert to a crit because you can get hits or crits. And with the Jordicas, they don't have any attack bonus, but for defense bonus, if they roll this symbol, it can turn to a block. So just be aware of that. That is like for the difference for that. So we're gonna continue on even further. Last but not least on the card you can see here is this area right here with the red dashes. So what that means is the movement that each unit can do. So Luke Skywalker can move using a movement tool of two as opposed to Darth Vader has a movement tool of one. So Darth Vader is slower than Luke Skywalker because Luke Skywalker is faster. He don't have any armor on as opposed to Darth Vader does have his armor so he moves a little slower. Now. If you look at like a, just a, a trooper card for like the fleet troopers, they have a, a unit movement of two, same as Luke Skywalker does. And each unit is different. Like Boba Fett, for instance, he has a movement tool of three. He's very fast 
as opposed to other ones has some will have one some will have two some will have three it depends on the type of unit like i said now one other thing that the reason why i brought this fleet trooper card up is just to show you a little bit of difference here into this so defense dice for luke skywalker and darth vader is red defense dice Fleet Troopers have white defense dice because they're different types of dice which we'll go through in a different video. And you can see Fleet Troopers all have a benefit of if they roll a uh, attack surge, they get an uh, extra hit. If they roll a defense surge, they get an extra defense. Now, on top of that, like Luke Skywalker for his range weapon has two red attack dice as opposed to the Fleet Troopers that have the D817 blaster pistols. Still the range is the same, but they roll to white dice per miniature. So if you have a unit of four for attacking uh, for fleet troopers, you actually would roll two, two white dice for attack for each miniature in the unit. As opposed to like Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader, they have a unit of one as I talked about here. But for the fleet troopers, they have four into their unit card before upgrades but you can also add different upgrades to the fleet troopers. Let me move that up here. You can see here they can accept like a heavy weapon, an extra unit, and then other things for the upgrades. What we'll go through shortly for the upgrade cards. And they have a uh, melee of a black die. They're unarmed, so they don't really have any like a uh, lightsaber. They don't have a sword, a uh, vibe saber, or anything like that, or a knife. They're pretty much unarmed with their fists as if they get in melee, they're just gonna punch. So be aware of that too as well. They don't have any different keywords here of what the weapons can do. I just wanna compare this so everybody is aware of this. This are unit keywords, they have ready one as opposed like for Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader had a lot more unit keywords. Um, also too as well, like the courage value is lower. So their courage value is only one, and they only have one wound, and they have white defense dice. So four units. So they would roll, if all four units and didn't have any upgrades were attacking, instead of rolling two white dice, they actually would go two times four is eight. So, or it's, yeah, eight. They would roll four, eight dice when they're attacking at range one to two with their DH-17 blaster pistol. Whew, all right. So that's pretty much it for the units, unit cards. Again, they have a different back onto it, it explains their stuff. Or this one here, because they don't have, oh geez, I'm out of focus there. They don't have anything here like Pierce One or what have you. So on the back, they'll just have like a little blurb because they don't have to explain anything for the fleet troopers. So just be aware that is for a unicard, but now I'm going to show you the types of unicards that you can get as opposed if it's a ground vehicle or if it's a trooper, a commander, and so on. Just so I can show you the different types of tokens they are in the cards. So stand by for that one. Did you know with the unicards before we say that that's it for the unicards explanation? Is up here, you can see here this is the T47 airspeeder. It has this type of token, so you use the command token for this. It is a one unit and it is a repulsor vehicle. So this symbol right here means a repulsor, repulsor vehicle. It's not associated just for the T-47 airspeeder, but if you have any other repulsor vehicles that you can buy for Star Wars Legion, it would use that symbol there. So you can be aware of that. Let's look at another one. So this is an ATRT. This is a ground vehicle. This is the symbol for the ground vehicle, and it has a unit of one miniature. So be aware of that too as well. We have this here. This here is Chuba or a Wookiee warrior. It is a, he is a trooper or they are troopers. But this symbol right here actually means, um, uh, da, 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 just funny, <laughs> special forces. And again, like I said, on page five of the, of the rule book here, uh, and each army may include up to three special force units. And again, this is for an 800 point game that we're talking about specifically. They're gonna be different for skirmish games, but that is special forces token. And there's three units, or three miniatures in this unit. Another one too as well is core units. Where I looked at the fleet trooper, that is the icon for it. And there's four unit, four miniatures for that unit. 
And then we have like Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader, which we already talked about. And that is it for the unit card breakdown. So the next thing I want to talk about is the upgrade cards, the types and how you can equip them to your units. Next thing we're talking about is the upgrade cards. So upgrade cards are smaller ones like this because these are unit cards. These are upgrade cards that you attach to each of your unit and they are small. But one thing you got to notice here, I got to pick them up. It's kind of hard here. All right, is they have different symbols on them. So we're going to first talk about the type of symbols that are on the upgrade cards, and then we'll talk about how you equip upgrade cards to unit cards. So let's stand by for that one. Unit upgrade cards. We're going to talk about that. You can see there's different types here. Now, I may not have all of them that is listed into the book, but I do have quite a bit. In total, there is four or not for 14 types of upgrade cards that you can get. So there's heavy weapon and actually I'll just go from uh, left to right for each one just to show you. So the first one here, it looks like an arrow kind of thing, I guess. These are ordnance cards. And next is your training cards. Next you have your grenades. And then you have what looks like a joystick or a controller, and they are pilot upgrade cards. You know, this one here, it's flipped over. It's the same as this one right here. Uh, the reason why it flipped over, I'll explain to you, but these are armaments. So with this here, it, they're one-sided with the symbol, but some of them, the armament cards that when you get in, in uh, upgrades, I'm kind of blocking everything here, sorry about that. So armament cards, so some armament cards that you get I'm just going to pull this one up tighter. They're double sided. So you can see two different types that are printed on for the armament. So be aware of that. Some cards and the reason why I know or how you know what type it is, is with that symbol right down there. So you can see that that's an armament card. So that's what that means. Some of them will have their double sided and they have that in the bottom left hand corner and other cards will have a symbol like that on the back of them. So just be aware of that. So continuing on, this one here looks like a droid head. That is what you call gear cards. And then you have another one here. And this one is a personnel card. The next, which is right there, is hard point cards. You have these guys here which kind of looks like a soldier. They're crew cards. And I already said about armament cards here. The thing that looks like a, a dice or a domino, it's command cards. Next here, the symbol is a force card. That is your heavy weapon card. And that one there is your commons card. Uh, the only thing I don't have is the generator cards. I don't have any generators, but There'd be a total of 14. There's 14 cards, but these two are the same. So there's only 13 cards on the screen right now, you can see. But there's one more missing, which is your ordinance, or not ordinance card, your, your, what did I say? Your generator cards. So be aware of that. I just don't have that, but that is it there. So that's types of upgrades that you have. So we're gonna just go over the upgrades as to what you can equip to units, because each of these, you can have so many different ones of these, like the heavy unit. There's so many heavy unit cards that you have, upgrade cards and so on. So it'd be easier just to show you one of the cards, like uh, Darth Vader, and show you how you can equip them and upgrade. So let's do that next. Looking back at the unit cards for just the upgrade section or the upgraded unit section. So again, Darth Vader, you can see the symbols that are here onto the left hand side. So with that instance, you look at that symbol. So Darth Vader can up, have three upgrades of the same equip and only three. So this here is one of the cards here. The symbol matches that. So he can do that. And lo and behold, I just grabbed one, which is pretty interesting, which I talked about already, which is the saber throw. So with the upgrade cards, they're very similar to the unit cards as in they have a unit cost. So right here for Darth Vader to bring the saber throw, it's going to cost him 10 more points. So Darth Vader is already 200 points, you can see there. 
but he's gonna be 210 if he upgraded, if he took the saber throw upgrade. And that would take up one of his upgrade slots. And he could upgrade two more of the same type if he wants, but that is all he can limit. You can't have three saber throw upgrades that are the same. You can have three of these symbols here. And again, that symbol, just so we're on the same page, is the force symbol. So we could have three force symbol upgrade cards, three force upgrade cards, but they have to be three different force upgrade cards, and that is all that Darth Vader can have. So this here says Saber Throw, and you can see this icon, it is an action, so choose one of your melee weapons. So Darth Vader here, he only has his Vader's lightsaber. Uh, perform a range attack with this weapon against enemy unit at range one to two using half of that weapon's dice round up. This is treated as an attack action. So it is an attack action. So because of that, it counts as an attack and it kind of turns his, uh, his lightsaber to a uh, range weapon. Cause he can throw it, throw it within one to two range. And you just have to half rounding up the dice. So it's three red dice he would use instead of the full six, because it is range, but it says round up. So three could potentially go to four. I'm not 100% sure about that part, but the way I play it is, it could be wrong. But when I'm using Darth Vader with Saber Throw, I only use three dice instead of four of the six. So you have to round up. So if it's seven, and half of seven, it's gonna be uneven, so it'd be three, but you have to round up, so then he would get four instead of three if it was seven red dice that he used for his attack. If, if you're on the same page with me and understand that. So that is for your upgrades. Now, what's interesting about this too, as well as some upgrade cards, you know, this is not gonna be able to be equipped to Darth Vader because of two reasons, but I'm gonna show you an upgrade card here. So again, this is the force icon, but this here is just another one here. So this, it shows you, it has the weapon symbol. So this is an armament card. It's a TT-57 Annihilator. But what's different as opposed to this, because you couldn't upgrade it, it says right here in little small text, is General Grievous only. So there's some cards that you get for your upgrade cards that you can only equip it to certain units. So Darth Vader couldn't use this one because this is only meant for General Grievous and nobody else. And what's important about this here, as you can see, the point cost is 12. It tells you here, like General Grievous only, critical one, pierce one. So these are keywords, versatile. Now, remember where I, for the unit cards that when I talked about it, like this unit card here, you flip it around and it explains what the keywords are. Now, it don't have other keywords that you flip over for this one, because if you flip it over, it just has the, the symbol. So here's where, if you print it off like the keyword list, it makes things a lot easier so that you can find what it means quickly, as opposed to rifling through the, the rule book and find out what each one of these keywords will what it means, but as you play the game more and more, you get familiar with what each keyword is. So just be aware of that too as well. And what's really cool is talking about General Grievous's uh, DT-57 here, you notice he has melee and he has a range icon. So that means that he can use this Annihilator in melee range as well as to uh, attack range from shooting at a distance and he would have two black dice and two white dice for the attack. Really cool for that. So again, that's just an example, but you can't attach this to Darth Vader because it has this symbol and also has a little subtext that it's General Grievous only. I just wanted to point that part out. So let's move Darth Vader out of the way, out of the way here so that we can show you Luke Skywalker's card. So Luke Skywalker, he has three upgrade slots that he can do to as well. He has two force, and he has the other one here, which is gear. So if you look at a gear card, so again, you match that symbol to the symbol on the upgrade card. So he can upgrade this one, unless there's a subtext saying that, you know, stormtroopers can only use it or what have you. But this one here, targeting scope, you gain precise one. 
when you spend an aim token, reroll up to one additional die. So it's really cool because most of the upgrade cards will have like a, in brackets what it means. But again, if you don't know what it means, you can always just refer to the keywords or the rule book. And the cost of this in the lower right hand corner is six. And it's got the symbol here that this here is a gear card. And the reason why it's a symbol here, because again, I showed you previously that some of these upgrade cards are double sided. They don't have the symbol, but you'll always know what it is because they'll have a symbol in the bottom right hand corner. So that is it for that part of upgrade cards. So again, he can do two force upgrades and one gear card for Luke Skywalker. So I'm just gonna move that out of the way and we're gonna grab another one here. So this is a troop card, the Fleet Troopers. So if we look at this, they have even more upgrade slots. So they have a heavy weapon. They have a, a person L upgrade that they can do too as well. They have a gear upgrade and they also have grenade upgrades that they can do. So they can upgrade up to four upgrade cards, one heavy weapon, one personnel, one grenade, and one gear card. So again, you can't have the same one attached. They have to be different ones. So just be aware of that. So like if they had, just hypothetically, if they had two heavy weapon slots, then you could have, and you have two heavy weapon upgrade cards that are both different, you could attach them. Now, a video that we played, <coughs> excuse me, I got a drink of water there, but a video that we played on our channel, Brady and I played, we were still learning the rules, we were very new to this, and we didn't really understand all of this. We did look in the book, but we only read it through once, and we kind of screwed up a little bit. So Brady actually upgraded two heavy weapon units, upgrade cards to this, which you can tell from this, you're not allowed to do. It's only one heavy weapon upgrade card you can have and one personnel upgrade card. So just be aware of that. Really pay attention to this so that you know specifically what everything is. So again, that's for your upgrade card. So again, if we were gonna upgrade this, I'll just show you as an example. Oh, here is a heavy weapons upgrade that matches the symbol. So I'm gonna use a fleet trooper so you flip it over, but oh, that is wrong. And I'll show you why it's wrong now. The reason why I said it's wrong is again, you, you look here, it is the heavy weapon and he got a heavy weapon, but it says stormtrooper only, and this is fleet trooper, so they cannot use that. So just so you know, we're on the same page. Now, another thing I want to point out about these upgrade cards is a couple of things. Now, with this upgrade card, you notice this upgrade card has an arrow. So what this means is when you have an upgrade card that has an arrow, it's after you use it, the one time use, it's exhausted. And what it means by exhausted is any card that has an upgrade at the arrow onto the upgrade card, after you use it, you want to turn it sideways. So that means you cannot use that card anymore unless you perform an action, which is called recover. And we'll talk about actions during another video, but just to kind of basically sum it up, if you choose a recover action as one of your actions during your activation phase, you're gonna get rid of your, uh, any suppression tokens you have in that and you refresh any of your exhausted cards. So that's what that arrow is for. Now, another thing too as well, is you can see it says impact three. Some cards you will have will be like uh, impact X or what have you. You know, this is just an example. Just say that this card was able to be used with the fleet troopers because it didn't say stormtroopers only. Now, if they had like an impact one, already on one of their weapons that are on the unit cards and they take an upgrade card that has like an impact two. So it is stackable, like your, your keyword abilities are stackable, which would mean that if you would have an impact one on the unit card and you have an upgrade card that says impact two, you would add the two and the one together. So therefore you would end up getting an impact three instead of just an impact one or an impact two. because. They're stackable, so just be aware of that. I did not know that until recently, and it's very important to point that out because sometimes it, it, it works in your benefit, not sometimes, it will definitely work in your benefit, especially if like you have armor on other vehicles you're attacking or units you're attacking or what have you. Again, I don't wanna get into all of the details, I'm gonna save it for other videos. 
because this video is probably going to be a little bit long in here because there's a lot of cards to cover into this. But anyhow, that's another example of unit cards right there. One more unit card to show you for if we were equipping upgrades to this. You know, the Wookiee Warriors, they have a heavy weapon upgrade that they can do into it. And I'm just not going to name them all, but you can see instead of three upgrades, they have one, two, three, four, five upgrades that they can equip to this. But remember, everything, every upgrade has a point cost that you have to add to what the unit already point cost is. So with the Wookiee Warriors, they have 75. So then you would add more points when you're building your army list to get to that 800 points or 500 points for skirmish or whatever points that you and the other player does agree upon. I know there's a lot of cards in this game, dice, tokens, what have you. So just a simple solution that I have for my upgrade cards. You now a friend of mine, Dwayne, has purchased this and given it to me because he's seen me struggling with trying to uh, separate all the cards in different bags and having oodles and oodles of baggies. So with this here, I'm just gonna open it up just to show you and pick these up. They're, you know, any card shop or gaming shop. And it just, you can have all your cards and organize them so it's easier to find them. And for upgrading, I still have a lot left over that I can do. So just be aware that, that there is something that you can use I, I don't support the name of this company by any means, but this is just the one that was given to me by my friend Dwayne. Thanks for that, Dwayne. And so you can get whatever way you want to hold your cards. You can use whatever you want. Other cards that you get into the game, and unfortunately, I don't have any of these cards as I'm shooting this video, but I'm sure in one of the box sets that I never opened yet, they're probably gonna have some of them cards. But you can see here, up here you have counterpart cards. So these counterpart cards are like R2-D2, C-3PO, and so on. And with the counterpart cards, you can they don't count as units on their own. You have to have their counterpart to be able to use them. It's so like R2-D2, C-3PO, and so on. That's what it, it's in the book. You just gotta look in table contents for that, so be aware of that. Another thing that I don't have is supply cards, so they kind of speak for themselves. They're supplies that you can find into the game and pick them up and so on. And also too as well, we got the hostage cards and they speak for themselves too as well, that you can play a scenario with hostages that you have to pick them up or escort them or and escort them and keep them safe or if you're on one of the sides, you're holding them so that they cannot be taken back into safe custody. So that's just an example for that. So let's continue on. I think we only have one more set of cards that I have to talk about in this video. What cards you see on the screen now are command cards. Now command cards will play a, a very important role at the start of each mission. And pretty much it states it's a command card. So you will command orders to whatever units activate first or you can randomly draw your order tokens out of a bag too as well. So when I say there's the different types here because you have one such as this one here and it has like uh, General Grievous there. So you can only use these if you had General Grievous into your army. And again, like General Grievous is one. We have uh, right here, Count Dooku is another. So you can only use that if if you have Count Dooku commander into your army. And once the commanders are eliminated, then you can't use those specific cards anymore during the turn. So just be aware of that. So these, this stack here is like General Veers, uh, Obi-Wan, Luke, Princess Leia. So these cards are specific to whatever the commander miniatures that you have. And the next cards here are more the generic ones. And so you have ones like Ambush. Uh, yeah, Ambush, Push Assault, and Standing Orders. Now, you notice too that they have these like dots on the upper left-hand corner. They are pips, or command pips. So when you are playing uh, the command phase where you're gonna issue orders, you're gonna pick one of the cards out depending on if you have a uh, the commander still alive of your army or not, and you put it face down onto the table, and your opponent will put one face down on the table, and you flip them up at the same time, and whoever has the lowest pip count will be determined who whose card works for the, they get their 
their command orders to do it first and they have the first activation. But again, it, the token that is the command counter to as well plays a part into it. So for instance, just say that both of you play an ambush card that has one pip onto it, but the red player has the dial, the turn dial. So then the person who's going to activate first will be the red player because they have the command, the command dial and they have the, the pip one as opposed to blue player who only has the pip one but don't have the, the turn dial. So be aware of that. We will explain more in depth when we're gonna be going into other videos for playing it, playing the game and how to set up and so forth and the phases for it. But they are command cards and each of them have different text. So here you see one unit. So therefore, when you're issuing orders and you play this card, then you're able to issue orders to only one unit. And it has to be within range one to three of your commander. So if you have like uh, General Grievous on the board, then you have to use the range ruler and it has to be within range one to three. And whatever units are within range one to three of General Grievous, they can issue one order token to a unit. And what I say by order token is the discs that I told you that I, for like the, the circular discs, then what you can do is you put it face up onto the order table to wherever you want, or wherever you want, but it has to be within the one to three range of your commander. And you can also issue an order to your commander if you want. So just say for instance, General Grievous, if these were gonna play in the same faction, but they can't, but just say hypothetically, they are able to do that. So, and we play ambush and says one unit. So therefore I can take their, if I wanted to do like a stormtrooper, activate stormtroopers or give them a command order. So then I take this and they're within range one to three of General Grievous. Then I can place it on the table upward, up, right side up. So you can see the, the token for whatever unit it is. And then during the activation, I could either pull a random command token out of the bag, or I can say, well, I'm gonna activate those guys. And then you flip it over. So that's what that is for the pips. And some cards too as well, they have some subtext, like this one here just has a saying, but you can get special cards. So this is a two pip one right here. It says two units instead of one unit. Another push one. Again, I have duplicate things. I'm just seeing if I can find like a, a specialty card here, but I think these don't have any specialty cards because these are all push. Actually, standing orders is going to have a specialty. There we go. So standing orders. So you can see here for standing orders. Now, if you played a, a the standing orders card and it has subtext, so it's one unit that you can put a order token on and it says at the end of the, the command phase, return this card to your hand. So you put it back into your hand. But other cards that you play, like the push ones or ambush or what have you, they're discarded during the game. So once you use it, it's gone. You can't pick it up and use it again onto the next round. On page 24 in the rule book, there's a section called command cards and explains everything about the command cards. It's actually on page 24 and page 25 before it gets into the command phase. But just to briefly read just a little bit of this, it says each player resolves command cards during the command phase of each game round. Each player begins the game with a hand of seven command cards. It's very important. A player must include one, must include, so in your hand of seven cards, you have to include two one pip cards, two two pip cards, two three pip cards, and the cards standing orders in your hand. So you have to have them regardless. You have to have the standing orders no matter what other command cards you have. But you have to have X amount. So you have like two one pips, two two pips, two three pips, and the pips, like I said, is that, that icon on the upper left hand corner of the command cards. It also goes on and explains a little bit more. It says a player cannot include more than one copy of a command card in their command hand. So you couldn't have two assault cards, two push cards, because you can have two two pips and two one pips or what have you, but you can't have the same title card. So where it says assault, you couldn't have two three pip or two three pip assault cards in your hand. 
No matter even if the uh, artwork is different, it don't make a difference. It's a stipulation in the game that you can't have. And there's four command card av cards available for all commanders. There's ambush, push, assault, and standing orders. Each commander and operative has at least three command cards specific to the character that can only be used if that character is included in armor, which I already explained. So General Grievous only, he has three command cards that you get when you get General Grievous that you can include into it. And the same with operative cards too as well, that are specific for like, to use with the Wookiees only or, or what have you. Um, continuing on here, uh, character specific command cards are identified by the name of the character appearing below the name of the command card, which we already went over. If a player's character has access to more than three character specific command cards, the player can include any number of those cards in their command hand so long as they follow all command hand rules. And it keep continues on with the next page for page 25. I'm not going to read all of this, but if you haven't got this uh, updated rule book, just go to Fantasy Flight Games. Just Google it or fantasyflightgames.com. Click on products, go to Star Wars Legion, rules, and you will see the version of it like I already stated what version is at the beginning of this video. But just sort of refresh everybody's memory because this video is kind of long. It's version 1.6.1. It's effective. February 28th of 2020. And this is what we're going off of again, like I said, for shooting this video. I'm sure there's gonna be more updated rule sets that come out before or after this video, but for these video sets, all of the videos in this series, we are referring to this rules reference. So just be aware of that. So again, that is the command cards that we're talking about. That is the video of all the cards types, the card types, that are included into the game. It may be a little lengthy video, but it's necessary so that everybody knows the type of cards, how to read them properly and so forth. And you can just read the, the rules manual too as well because it explains it. But if you're anything like me, I'm not a big fan of reading rule books over and over again. I'll read it once and then I'll just look for videos and everything online. And then once I play it, I'll just refresh the rules as I go along. So hopefully this is going to help everybody who is either new to Star Wars Legion or wants a rules refresher of the cards and so on. And you know, just, just going from there. So I hope I managed to cover everything about the different types of cards that are into the game. And also I would like to just do another shout out, a special thanks to the two that have helped me here so far. And that is Lieutenant Dan Poole and also Richard Osborne. Thank you very much. And they helped me out with this, with this video in this series so far. And I probably will be going upon them later on to say like, hey, could you help me with the movement, the deployment and everything else. So just look forward to them. And don't forget, hit the subscribe button, the bell notification icon, if you haven't already. And if you found these videos useful, just comment down below and let me know, say like, hey, this is a great series or, you know, this is a very helpful series. Or if I miss anything, comment down below and let me know like, hey, you forgot to talk about this part. And the sole purpose of this is again, that for people who are either veterans or are wanting to learn the game or just purchase the game and, or even didn't even purchase the game, just want to know more about the game to help them decide to buy it that these videos are here for that, such as myself, which is a new player, because I did learn some new things from going over these, and because I'm shooting the videos, it's more gonna be in my mind, and it's more of a rules refresher that, you know, I'm, I'm obviously gonna be looking back on the rules, because everybody does it, no matter how long you've been playing the game for, you are going to have to, you're gonna come across some situation, you're gonna scratch your head, and you're like, hmm, let me check that out, and then check in the rule book. So hopefully this is gonna help you out with that. Huh. All right. So again, thank you very much to who helped me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Without you, I would not be, none of our Board Game Maniacs players that are on the channel would not be where we are today if it wasn't for you, the viewers out there. So thank you very much for all of your help. And we'll continue on pushing forward, playing new games, doing rules videos such as this. 
so that we can learn together and play together. Thank you very much. And remember one important thing before we go, and that is be a maniac. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Boo. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to keep up to date with Board Game Maniacs, click on the like and subscribe button to be notified when more videos come available. If you want to become an official sponsor of Board Game Maniacs, go to patreon.com slash boardgamemaniacs. Or you can go to streamlabs.com slash boardgamemaniacs1. That's right, and you can donate to help keep the lights on, keep food in our bellies, and play more games. We'll purchase more games, more equipment to make Board Game Maniacs evolve and get bigger and larger because of you, the viewers. I thank you from the bottom of my toes to the top of my head for all of your support. And until next time, Board Game Maniacs, be a maniac.